오케이 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 Okay, let's see. Hey, Joe. Ne. Okay, let's. Okay. It seems that you can see me, and you. It seems that you can hear me. So I'll be sketching for like an hour or something and so let's get to it. Uh, this is a sketch that I will uh, later upload for my Patreon supporters. Uh, but I wanted to show you how I how I do it. So <coughs> you can see how I how I do it and I have you on the chat here so uh, if you have any questions or something uh, you can ask me on the chat I'll zoom a little bit here okay uh, okay so I'll be I'll be sketching a restaurant that we found with Kana uh, lately and I say found because it, we actually found it and I will be doing it uh, in two stages so first I'm doing like this really rough sketch thing to get the grasp of what I want to do here <clears throat> and then I will get to the main part and this time I will do it a little bit differently than usual because I will do it like uh, with pencil and then watercolors and then black lines with ink um, to save time a little bit so this will be kind of rough probably <clears throat> okay so this uh, let's say uh, this this was a restaurant like a soba udon 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 and soba so the Japanese noodles restaurant that we found with Kana and it was actually located under a uh, staircase uh, in a sta train station so there's like the train station platform here and this was like underneath the, 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 the stack is just so small and so cramped. That was kind of cute and funny. So uh, we took a lot of photos and kind of even took a video. So I have some reference to, to sketch it from. Okay, so here is like the staircase and there was like a huge thing here and <clears throat> Yeah, okay, so more or less like this so now I'm going to go to the main paper I have 
here. Oh, that's white. Okay. Uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay. And today I'm, I'm using the uh, Canson Heritage paper that I received recently, like a sample pack, like this one. And I already used one of the papers here, so now I'm using the. Uh, what is this? Hot pressed, I think. So this was like a package with three papers inside for me to <coughs> test. Okay, so let's do the sketch. And let's answer some questions. Sandra asks, do you ever do watercolors without lining? Just pencil sketch and watercolors? Yes. Sometimes I do it. It depends on the subject and depends on what I want to achieve with the, uh, with the sketch. Uh, let's say what pencil I will use for this one. Hmm. I need to go for where is my It depends on what style I want the sketch, the final sketch to be. Uh, if I want it to be more like painterly, I do it with uh, uh, with only paints sometimes. And can I give Kana permissions? Yes. Kana, I gave Kana permissions to write stuff as a moderator. So, like a link to to ka iro iro yoin shita Kana wo. So she can plug her stuff and put links on. This is kind of. I need something more visible. Let's see, maybe this one. This is okay, probably. Uh, I need something more. <clears throat> like 3B or something like this. This is my first time uh, painting and drawing on this paper, so I don't know how well it handles anything, but I I got it from from the guys from Canson, so it would be nice to, to at least try and test it. So maybe I can. see how well it performs it's kind of s smooth i'm not used to working on smooth paper like this <clears throat> okay Uh, this is actually probably one of my first attempts to do anything on hot pressed paper. I don't know if you can see well, maybe a little bit darker. Okay. I I would really like to have a sketchbook. Uh, uh, Helen asks, do you keep a sketchbook? And I'm, I'm like, I would really like to have a sketchbook. I mean, I, I, I love sketchbooks and I collect them and I have a lot of them and I love the Moleskin and I love other sketchbooks like the Sea White of Brighton I had and the Canson sketchbook. I have a sketchbook that I use, at least I try to use, but it's not like I'm a sketchbookist uh, like Jake Parker said, uh, it's more like I used sketchbook when I have to do some sketching but I, I don't use a sketchbook just to fill my time because I'm kind of busy with other my projects and uh, if I just have a few moments to spare on, on doing something, on drawing something, I just focus on, on, on finishing stuff uh, rather than sketchbook. But I would really like to have some more cool sketchbooks because I so envy people that, that have cool sketchbooks and uh, can fill them. 
and be like, oh, I finished another sketchbook this year and I'm like, I, I cannot finish sketchbooks and I cannot start sketchbooks. I, I now have a sketchbook that's made by Canson and it's a really nice one actually, mixed paper. I was doing the last stream uh, in it. So if you if you search on my YouTube channel for the last stream, I did like a track that I was doing in the in that sketchbook. But <clears throat> I would really like to to, to have more. Um, in Japanese we say yoyu, so free space, so I can uh, uh, put time into my sketchbook. But I don't really have. Is this, uh, Sergius, <laughs> Sergius asks, is this restaurant under the bridge? Yes, uh, this, uh, it's not ab under the bridge, it's actually under a uh, staircase in a, in a station, in a train station. Uh, so it's really small, tiny. Ta restauracja jest pod schodami na stacji kolejowej. Jest bardzo malutka. Okay. So there are like sliding doors here with posters of the contents of the many and there's like a kind of a vending machine that actually does not sell anything just hands you the ticket then then you go and hand to the guy who actually makes the food so he does not have to handle the money or or give you the change or anything you just buy the ticket and ch choose what you want to eat from the machine here and then you go inside <coughs> hi Valentin asks, would you use sketchbook to draw people or landscape? Uh, I struggle with drawing moving people, but I think it's a great exercise. I would I would actually do all kinds of things. I do cars and I do uh, places, I do people. Sometimes I, I draw like uh, in train, in the train or uh, in a restaurant or something when I have a little bit of time. Okay. One option I see nearby is round one. Hi Siri! Shut up! <laughs> why? Not, why? <laughs> okay. That's weird. Usually when I say the magic words, the, 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 the phone does not want to uh, turn on. But yeah, uh, going back to the sketchbook. Um, yeah, I, I do a lot of, of sketches of various things. I, I don't have a theme. <laughs> I, I was uh, last like two weeks ago, a week ago in the radio station and they told me to turn off the phone when I was going into the recording thing and probably because of stuff like this like you don't have siri going on you uh in in, in the middle of, of of live broadcast okay so the the doors are like this and like this okay so this is most more or less the, the how the restaurant looks and there's like a huge thing here, probably a uh, air conditioning unit, I'll make it darker like this. <clears throat> okay. I'm using a Pentel Graph Gear pencil. Can I get, can I catch it on the, on the autofocus? Oh yeah. I'm using a Pentel Graph Gear pencil, which I really like, and we have a lot of them with Kana, and we both use use them. Pentel Graph Gear 1000 
and I really recommend it because it's 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 nice. <clears throat> I yeah I have a I have a sore th not not sore throat but it does not hurt. Hmm. I got to. That's the sound of tea. And the tea is good. No, 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 no. Genmai cha? Tea. Thank you, Alice. Okay, so I'm more or less done with this part here. So I will use the same pencil maybe uh, I would like to have something more a little bit more soft mm. what should I use for this maybe this one sorry for the sound this is my M pencil sharpener <clears throat> oh yeah this is better is hard so now I erased the sketch a little bit so I can still see it but it's not so visible and I will use a 3b pencil to to, to make it better again okay so let's do the sketch and I will answer some questions. Uh, is there a part of Japan you never went to but you would li really like to go? I never went to Hokkaido but I would really like to see some Hokkaido. <clears throat> I'm told that it has a lot of different architecture than the main part of Japan so I would like to go there and just do some sketching and, and do some exploration so I would like to see Hokkaido but I, I have not went there yet okay and this this banner part here has like a metal edge so this is the edge <clears throat> like this and there's like a pipe here that goes out and there's like a small thing here I don't know what this is but probably it's important and there's like the air conditioning unit here I'm sorry for the noise but I will be using the pencil sharpener from time to time so <clears throat> ah yes Nadia asks uh, would you would you recommend the uh, Unibal uh, Kuru and here it's uh, called Kurutoga actually uh, and I, I think it's a different thing that uh, we would like to use because Japanese people are used to use those kind of mechanical pencils for writing for writing their uh, letters and this is what this kind of pencil with the rotating lead is so if you write and you write b letter by letter and you lift it it spins a little bit I actually tested it I had one of them and it's okay for writing when you have a nice rhythm you don't have to like rotate the pencil to keep the lead sharp on all sides uh, but for drawing uh, when you do a little bit longer lines like this um, it, it gets dull either way so the, the, the function that it gives you is rather uh, not really good for, for drawing. If you 
if you like writing by pencil that maybe it's okay for for that but uh, I don't think that it's actually any good for better for drawing than unusual um, mechanical pencil and I actually prefer uh, the one I showed you before the Pentel one um, and it's kind of expensive also I mean they they, they, they want like 2000 yen or something for it uh, which is not really good money for uh, the quality and the, the almost no uh, for me uh, almost no plus sides on it especially especially that it actually kind of makes the lid a little bit wobbly because it has to have like this kind of like 0.5 millimeters uh, space to move inside so it can like pump it around when you put it to paper, paper it does like this kind of dip that um, it's kind of similar to the rapidograph pencil a little bit so it's not really nice for a pencil I think Pentel uh, Graph 1000 for Pro and we actually use like 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, which is the nine is really nice. I use it a lot for for sketching stuff. Yes, I'm originally Polish. I have a sticker <laughs> that says "Made in Poland." <laughs> Okay, so here is the Noren, so the, the like the cart curtain thing. No, it's not an ATM. It's like a vending machine for tickets. So w before you go to the restaurant, you choose your food in this machine, and then it prints you and you put money in and it prints you a ticket and you uh, give the ticket to the. Um, person inside and they give you food so they don't have to handle any money or give you the change or do anything like this and you can pay with your uh, smartphone with like the pay, pay not PayPal uh, how do you call it like Suica or I Ikoka uh, electric money they call it here or any uh, else Ah, uh, Firdaus asks, uh, any tips on av avoiding awkward lines when watercolors, when they dry? Uh, so there are a few tips that for, for this. One, uh, try to paint, uh, so you paint uh, in one go. So before the thing, the part is completely dry, you like kind of continue, you push it. Uh, uh, further and further so before it gets dry uh, you push it and you also have to use kind of okay paper and okay paints to not have the lines and to be able to do kind of nice uh, washes without any like um, strange lines strange strange lines uh, in them so you paint apart and then you refill your brush and then you start painting again in the in the place when you left uh, the paper but um, before it it dries so you can just like push this bead of water that is still there further and further so if it dries completely there's no way to make it like nice and smooth you will always get kind of like marks in this place Okay, so this door here. Oh. Okay.
Uh, if I use the pencil like this, does the paper get dirty? Um, the the trick is the trick is not to touch the part that you already did with your hand. Uh, I have the bad habit of starting in the middle, which is a bad habit. I would have to. It would be better to start from here. Uh, but I have a bad, a bad habit from of starting in the middle of the picture, which is not good. Uh, and if you really cannot avoid it, you just make what I do. Just put a like a tissue, a tissue here, tissue paper, so your hand does not touch it, and um, does not smudge the pencil so much. Okay, so there's like a corner here. And there's more of it here. And there are the, do the side doors here. Kind of thick because this is the part that moves. And there's the rail here. Uh, Valentin asks, would you say you have pretty much found your style? Do you experiment sometimes? Um, I, I'm kind of comfortable uh, with my current way of painting and drawing when it comes to watercolors uh, and like pencil drawings. But still, if I would like to do some more pencil drawings, like real, real pencil drawings with only pencil, I'm not really good at this, I think, still. So I would like to uh, find my style in pencil drawings or find my style in ink drawings because I'm still not really good at ink drawings. So it depends of, from of with the medium me media, you say. I think I'm kind of okay with, with watercolors and I like uh, how most of the things I do uh, turn out but with other things like like ink only or, or pencil only I think I still have to figure them out a little bit. So for me this the style is kind of tied to the tool you use a little bit. Okay. I'm using the Mitsubishi High Uni pencil. Those are the pencil that I think are the best for me actually they are kind of smooth and and black and um, really smooth compared to like uh, European pencils that I, I was using like the Faber-Castell pencils or, or the Kokinor pencils mm, and I really like the like the sm smoothness of, of, of them these are actually the pencils that animators in Japan use for their uh, drawings. The music that's playing is uh, made by uh, a guy that's called Scott Buckley. And I use his music in my videos all the time because uh, I support him on Patreon and he does a lot of uh, music that you can use under Creative Commons license so you can use his music in your videos and stuff and that's great uh, because it's really hard to find nice music for videos that will not get you in trouble and you can even get in trouble for some music that was Creative Commons but, but someone um, signed with a production company and now all their music is kind of copyrighted and your videos get flagged. I had that a few times so I, I just use 
um, uh, the music from this guy a lot because I know that I can use it and it's okay. Kurduar pisze. Masz jakieś zamienniki dla tych Mitsubishi? Czy można zadawać pytania po polsku? Uh, and so he asks if I have something different than the Mitsubishi pencils. Uh, you can also use the Tombow Mono, which is like this. Tombow Mono 100 and they are really good also. And I actually like the Stedler ones. Uh, but above, I think 5B, they get like a color pencil so they are more oily uh, and they don't erase actually at all but I like how black they are and and how intensive they are and they don't get smudged when you use watercolors on them so they are nice uh, I use all grades of pencils usually about 2B but I use from F like F H B H also and until like 8B and and 10B sometimes so there's a lot of pencil grades that I use and a nice tip if you are using pencils for your lines you can use uh, really uh, hard pencils like H or 2H for the things that are far and like 10B or something for the things that are really close to make them kind of stand out and that's an interesting technique that you can use and actually it works really well Especially if you later paint over it with watercolors, that it kind of makes everything nicer. Okay, so I'm be I'm better more more rough with this part here because this is a, like a sketch. But okay. I stop speaking when I'm drawing straight lines. Probably it takes all my brain power to my hand. Okay, and there's like the stairs the side of the stairs here and there's like a lamp here and here and the roof goes like this and there's like a sign here And there's the the edge of the platform. I'm doing it really like I don't know if the perspective is right even. Like yeah, just like this. Okay. I did I did like this kind of sketch first to know more or less what I'm doing. And then I sketched it really light. And now I'm doing it with more um soft pencil to do it more visible so when i paint it with watercolors later uh, you you would still be able to see the lines but probably in the end i will use some of the pigma uh, liners to uh, finish it I, I this is a new paper for me so i don't know how it will behave with this kind of approach Okay, so let's do the other side here. Did you, ah, Kurduar asks, did you enter any art school or uh, are you autodidact? Uh, I'm autodidact. <laughs> uh, I, um, I did go for for like a digital art kind of uh, special. How do you call it? Uh, course, course, course. Uh, 
in my uh, university, but I was um, kind of fo fo focused on uh, computers, on programming and, and kind of stuff when I was in, in the high school. And so I did not go for any proper like um, art classes or stuff like this. Um, most of the things I can do is only because I, I did it myself. So I did not get any proper like art education in the end. <sighs> okay. Um, I, I don't know, this part here is kind of weird. Okay, so there's like a um, yellow line kind of thing here that you ha you don't want to cross. Oh, more thicker, thicker. Do you have a favorite programming language? <laughs> That's an interesting question, Do, doing a live art stream. Um, I was doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I like kind of C stuff because uh, I'm doing I'm doing Arduino. And so I, I like like C, C++ and, and all this kind of uh, C-like languages. But recently I was doing some um, development of uh, like internet related th things so I was using a lot of Python because it's so easy to like parse the information you can download from the internet using this language and 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 do stuff with files so it's really 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 um, easy to do uh, like um, a program that downloads something from the internet and then parses a website and then puts the information in a file or uh, in a different format which was which was like kind of painful so this kind of like s operating system level um operations on files and stuff is really easy in python so i really like python lately but i've i have been doing a lot of arduino uh, um, so yeah i'm kind of mixed Okay, so and there's like this kind of pose here that I don't know what they are, but they are here. And there's like a some stuff here, like a like a billboard for something. And like this. So it's in the back. I'll just I'll just erase it a little bit. Okay. Okay. So with this, the sketch is done. Uh, I will do um, I will do the watercolors and answer some more questions. Malena asks, "Do you do another drawings from the Tokyo at Night series?" Yes, I want to do do more. Uh, but I was uh, being busy with my animation project and with my comic project. So uh, first I want to finish the Yuragi comic. And when I finish the Yuragi comic, I'll probably do some more Tokyo at Night sketches. Sketches like paintings. So yeah, I, I want to go back to this. Even though I'm not at Tokyo anymore, I'm kind of further away uh, from Tokyo. But uh, I still want to do some uh, stuff. Okay, let's do some painting. And to just show you how this looks here, I have a, uh, like my watercolor set here and my tank with water and my brushes. Ah, you will probably see it upside down, but whatever. 
Okay. Oh, this is actually kind of difficult, this picture, picture but let's see. And I have some really basic brushes and this kind of ceramic dishes to mix my paint and this bigger dish to mix the paint. Okay, let's go at this. The Tokyo Storyfront's book uh, will be at uh, other bookshops uh, it's on Amazon now but uh, for pre-order but it will be on other shops also uh, it will be on Amazon uh, United States it will be on uh, shops like uh, that sell uh, Japanese books outside of Japan and I think it's like Tokyo Otaku Mode and CD Japan first but probably after the book will be published, it will appear on other places too, because um, now it's only pre-order, so I, it's not everywhere, but... Uh, it probably will appear in other places too. I will zoom a little bit, maybe. Okay. okay, so here's the screen of the of the eight uh, like vending machine thing and I'll actually use a similar color for for this part here I'm using here the cobalt turquoise and a little bit of potter's pink as usual because I, I really like this color and it's nice for doing like uh, neutral grays and colors that are like this kind of neutral because it mixes really well what are you uh, uh, again Kurdwar asked what are your favorite things for line art uh, do you mean uh, like uh, supplies or things to draw because if uh, I want to start the drawing how should I start um, this is kind of uh, interesting because um, I started by uh, drawing and, and painting stuff that I saw uh, in the TV. So I just did like cartoons, uh, copy cartoons from the TV. Uh, I don't know if you remember or know them, but I did like Ed, Ed and Eddie or Dexter's Laboratory or Cow and Chicken and this kind of um, stuff. But I was also doing uh, like um, things that I saw, so chairs and pipes and cool cars and stuff like uh, cool um, houses. So I was doing a lot of things that I just liked to, to, to paint. I did not have any like purpose. So I did a lot of nonsense paintings, but um, uh, did actually help me to get some skills in doing a lot of different um, in painting a lot of different things the, the worst thing the worst thing you can you can do probably is doing only like one kind of of stuff so uh, your favorite characters or your favorite like pose or your favorite just like faces of characters or I, I see it a lot when I just uh, go through the people who follow me on Instagram for example so um, it's best to do a lot of various stuff so you're kind of versatile and then focus on stuff that you really feel you like to to draw and paint so if you feel you like to to paint um, cars you paint cars if you feel you like to paint i don't know like cute characters you paint cute characters it's it's up and it's up to you but um it's nice to do a lot of stuff so when someone asks you um please can you do this illustration for me you can be like okay it's kind of difficult for me but i'll try so it's nice to be versatile and can do like backgrounds and do perspective so it's important to uh, try different things ah 
Okay, so Kurdera asks about fine, fine liners and stuff. Uh, so fine liners and stuff. I do a lot of line work with pencil, especially if it's just like sketching for and it's not finished work. So it's like uh, for storyboards and stuff. I do a lot of pencil. Uh, so I use mecha mechanical pencil sometimes and I use uh, just the Mitsubishi Uni you saw. But for lines, I used to use a lot of Copic, uh, like Copic multi-liners, like these ones here. But, uh, and they, they are good. I mean, I like them because they, they have a nice ink that is waterproof and, and you can do a lot of stuff with them. They come with various thicknesses and you can do a lot of like swapping parts if you break something you can swap just the tip for example and they're kind of economical i like them but they don't really wo work well on watercolor paper because it's just a felt tip pen so um, they kind of uh, don't do a nice stable line so uh, recently i have been using the rotring uh, isograph pens like these ones, which which are really nice, and I recommend them a lot. But um, there are also kind all kinds of stuff that you can use. You can use uh, this kind of pilot pens that are like this flat pens, like this kind of flat pen. You can use uh, just a usual um, how do you call it? In, in, in Japanese we call it manishitsu, some like fountain pens uh, that you fill with waterproof ink, waterproof uh, fountain pen ink and you can do a lot of crazy stuff with this. I, I actually love fountain pens. Uh, so it does not have to be expensive to be really good. I have been using like the uh, Kakuno, it's made by uh, Pilot I think. Which is like kind of the kids pen, uh, kin kids um, version of the of the of of a, of a I cannot remember how to call it. <laughs> uh, so. There are a lot of things you can use, actually. Okay. I have a reference photo I'm looking at uh, uh, for this sketch. This is uh, this is an actual uh, restaurant we we found with with Kana. Uh, so I actually have a photo reference for this one and it was so cute I wanted to paint it yes that was a pilot par parallel pen uh, I speak three languages I speak Polish and I speak English and I speak Japanese uh, which is kind of necessary when you want to work in, in Japan because uh, you have to be able to speak Japanese well to be able to take any part in a group project or something uh, you have to be able to speak well Japanese yes it's true I did a, did a background not a background I did 100 and about 20 backgrounds for your name so about one tenth of the backgrounds you can see in the movie uh, and it came about because I was working uh, it in the animation studio uh, that Makoto Shinkai was working is working in uh, for about four years and uh, I spent a lot of time doing backgrounds for his work and for other works um, that were uh, being done in this studio so I was one of the main staff for the your name 
uh, animation, the background background stuff. I did a lot of a lot of paintings for this movie. Of course, everything digital. Uh, uh, Fields asks, "How do you work on a project when I'm tired but I still have to work on it?" Um, there's no good answer for this. The, the good answer is that you probably have to plan uh, the project so um, you don't have to work on it when you are tired. And um, how to do this is kind of difficult, but there are some things that you can do. Um, for example, you, you can um, plan your day so um, the most kind of boring thing that you have to do and the, the thing that you don't have to use your brains for uh, you, you save for like the evening when you are tired and you do the things that require the most creativity in the uh, like in the morning when you're still fresh and you have like your energy resting is really important because if you just do your work every day all day you burn out no matter how good you are at your stuff so um, if you just do like this one thing, you will get tired. So like balancing work with your um, kind of uh, free time that you can let your head rest and your hands rest and your body rest is really important. And if you are tired and you really have to do the work, you just you just you just do it because um, on it depends like um, your income and and all kinds of stuff. So there are some times that you have to just work through, but uh, you have to kind of reward yourself afterwards because it's in important to kind of let your brain know that you did well if you want to work more okay so this is like this part here and it's darker and there's like a line probably a different kind of concrete used for this part so I'll just end it here Ah, this is too blue. Let's let's correct it a little. Okay. Ah, okay, so you want to see my palette. Okay, so I'll zoom a out a little bit so you can see it. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Okay, so I'm using now these two small palettes here. The paper is kind of... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, it does not have any like visible texture to it and it's kind of smooth so it does not take the watercolor so good and it kind of warps but I was kind of expecting that so that's why I used it for like a simple sketch nothing more it's probably more uh, targeted at something like a botanical sketches or um, stuff with maybe gouache that does not require so much water so probably um, uh, it's better for like a, a mixed media or something like that but for watercolors it's kind of meh I would recommend more the, the, the cold pressed or the uh, like rough one. I did not try the rough one yet, but I have it, so probably I'll also do like a stream or something. It kind of buckles. 
uh, I'm I'm recording this. I have a small tripod on my desk, and it's a huge desk, so I can fit it. Uh, okay. This part of kind of blue. Okay, and sorry if I asked already. Do you prefer natural or synthetic brush tips for watercolors? Um, this is a difficult question because I prefer uh, natural tip brushes, but I would prefer to use um, synthetic brushes. So um, I used a lot of synthetic brushes and I was feeling okay with the synthetic brushes, but I started to use natural brushes and they are awesome. So I was looking for a nice synthetic brush that would be kind of similar to this kind of feeling. And I found some, for example, this one I'm using is the Raphael Soft Aqua brush, which is kind of close to natural hair brushes it kind of gets a little bit hooked nosed if you uh, if you use it but uh, it's okay so that's one good alternative for for natural hair brushes I found recently so I would like to have probably I mean in in some years the the synthetic brushes will get better and better because of the like progress in chemistry and stuff like that so i i'm really um pro synthetic brushes actually uh, what colors i'm using i'm using a lot of helio turquoise the blue color and i'm using a lot of caput mortum which is the color of death uh, not really but um I like it. It's like this kind of d dull red that mixed with the blue, it makes really nice n neutral tones. Tones. And I'm using Prussian blue, no, Prussian green, and some reds and other stuff like the. Uh, like I will be using some indigo and some greens for the inside of the shop. So yeah. Caput mortum. Mm. Yeah, caput means death, and mortum also means death. I think. Uh, so um, it's like dead, dead. And from what I learned is. Um, the alchemists were using a lot of stuff and most of the like um, the thing that was left after their experiments were, were done was the, the like reddish stuff that could not be used for anything anymore so it was declared dead like caput mortem so that's from where from uh, this name came I, I, I think no I'm not using any white for this for now okay so the insides of the shop are kind of darker but not so dark so I'm trying to get them just the right color like this kind of bluish green probably there's some light inside okay and What is your favorite book for reference? I have a lot of Studio uh, Ghibli books I used for lef reference a lot in my works. I like their backgrounds and I like their characters, so I use a lot of references from uh, from their works. I have the uh, The Art series, a lot of them uh, on my bookshelf to uh, look at when I when I'm kind of lost at what I should do so I can recommend those books and they also have ones in, in English so it's good I, I have the Japanese ones though 
Caput Mortum. It sounds like a it sounds like a spell from Harry Potter or something like Caput Mortum. <laughs> And it kills everyone. The end. <laughs> you can ask me, you can ask me any spell from Harry Potter and I probably will know. Um, my favorite uh, studio, uh, studio Ghibli movie it's kind of difficult to answer because I, the, it changes a lot with time. I have, now it's now it's probably Ponyo uh, because it's nice and animation fresh, but it, it depends. Splitting spell. Uh, wait. Was it the one that uh, they used to explode the maze in the last part? Uh, that was Reducto, right? Reducto? I, I, I read the bo books and and I listen a lot to, uh, of audiobooks with with Harry Potter in in Polish and in Japanese and in English which is a nice um, kind of uh, way to defend ah redacto also explodes stuff mm. <laughs> My favorite Harry Potter book is probably uh, The Prisoner of, uh, of Azkaban. <laughs> and I like the movie also, it's kind of dark and nice. But I like the first one and the, and the, the second one also. I like most of them actually. Okay, let's see the camera. Is the camera okay? The camera has two bars left. Okay. Uh, let's do some posters. I would just use, I don't know, it's like food. So let's use some uh, random food colors. On this, it's like food. And food. And a kind of chicken, so more orangish. Chicken. In here, and there's like items here, and there's stuff here in a bowl, and there's a huge sign that says 30. I don't know what 30 it means, like 30 yen or whatever, but let's paint 30 in red. Signs and letters are really important in sketches like this because they uh, really add to uh, the re realism of the scene uh, if you want to be kind of accurate with with the backgrounds and make them kind of realistic and pop uh, you have to add a lot of like realistic text and adverti advertising to um, kind of get the um, how do you call it ambience or not ambience like the atmosphere uh, and good thing is um, doing signs and, and lettering and all kinds of like details. Um, if you ever tried to sketch a library or a bookshop, you know how difficult it is because if you don't actually paint all the titles on, on all the books, it does not look like realistic. So if you are for like realistic stuff, uh, this is kind of pain. And uh, in the Makoto Shinkai movies, uh, we did some backgrounds of like shops and convenience stores, convenience stores. And I was really happy I did not have to do that. Someone else did that. So I was like, oh, I escaped there. like squares here mm. 
No, I was. Uh, 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 <laughs> Kurdwar is uh, asking if uh, when I was working on on your name, was I working in the studio or uh, in my home? I was working in the studio. I was just a, a usual studio member, and I was going to work every day at like starting work at ten, finishing work when I when it was finished. So late, most of the times the closer we get to the deadline uh, but yeah uh, I was working not from home okay there's like text here yes I was I was working on the on your name I did uh, backgrounds for the movie and I this did also background design for the uh, how do you call it? Looking back at things part and I exploded the village. The small village that was in the movie and it when it was hit with the... Uh, I, I think I can already do like spoilers. <laughs> when it was hit with the meteorite kind of thing, I did the explosion background. And I did the earth background when the meteorite, meteorite was falling down and exploded stuff. Which was funny. Because I helped design the village in the first place, so it was kind of interesting to help it explode into oblivion. I don't know, Today, uh, today's live stream is kind of dark. Where can I see Kana Arts? Uh, かな。えっと、人たちはどこの彼女の作品を見える。サイト。リンクして、あの彼女にあの権利をあげたから。サイト。え、サイトもYouTubeでも。You can see her works on her YouTube and on her website and she will link it in the chat so you can see it. Ah, and by the way, if the, the screen goes dark for uh, for a second, it's just me uh, putting new battery in the camera, so don't worry. Okay. And didn't do the top part a little bit. Uh, Okay, what color is this? I don't know. Let's try this one. Thank you for having me here. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Uh, this is weird color actually. It's kind of close. Let's try. Okay, this looks okay. It's a kind of sketch, I don't know. Uh, this paper is weird, so I don't want to try too much on this. But, yeah, let's, let's do the top part. And this part, no, this part is already darker. Okay, so uh, this part here. Ah, lunar eclipse, yes. Uh, Senna asks, you, you actually have no accent in Japanese, right? I don't know, I have a little bit probably. <laughs> in English I have really heavy accent. Uh, maybe it's because I, I learned English when I was still in Poland. So um, I, I have some Polish accent probably with my English, that's why. But I learned Japanese when I was in Japan. So, um, I probably picked the right, picked up the, the, the right pronunciation for, for, for the words. Okay, and there is like a more blue thing here with, with texture. So let's use the, my, fav my favorite color right now, which is the uh, potter's pink. Mixed with blue. And 
more blue. A, a good tip for watercolor users if you make a mistake use a tissue right away and it helps most of the times okay. at what age did you go to japan at uh, what age did uh, 23 around that uh, because uh, I I, uh, I was already graduated from my un uh, university in Poland and I went to the graduate uh, course in Japan so I was like 22 I think this is a hot pressed almost no textured I don't know what I'm doing paper because this is the first time I'm using this one and it's the Canson heritage hot pressed the red one with the red packaging I did I did study in, in Poland I did study information technology so computers and stuff and when I get, came to Japan I was like a research student for manga and animation because that's what I wanted to study but um, after some time I uh, applied for the master's course, course and I did uh, like study animation. So my uh, final work at the university was also like a short animation movie. Have you ever experienced hair loss with Rafael Kolinsky brush? Uh, n no, actually. Uh, I did not have any such experience with, with the Kolinsky Rafael brush. Uh, but uh, after some time, uh, the tip got really bad and it did not stick together anymore. So I, I don't, I, uh, I, I'm not using it anymore. Uh, probably it's because I did a lot of painting with it, uh, uh, with uh, like the Tokyo Story Fonts series. So probably it just got old, but um, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, it got old so fast. I was hoping that it will last a little bit longer, but uh, I don't really know how uh, natural brushes, uh, how long they, they are supposed to last. For me, it lasted like, I don't know, half a year or something like that, which is probably okay. But um, I was kind of disappointed a little bit because it, it was not cheap. And Sandra asks, and were your studies in Japanese? Yes, because um, in, in Japan, uh, it's really rare that you actually um, find uh, like a company or a course in the university or somewhere that is in English because 99% of the people who want to learn Japanese animation are Japanese. That, that is one thing, but... Uh, I did study in the uh, Kobe Design University in, in Kobe, uh, which has manga, Japanese manga and animation uh, stud studies. Uh, but um, you're probably better off uh, in the undergraduate uh, than the graduate because uh, in the graduate you are more left to your own devices so you do your own kind of learning and in the undergraduate they actually teach you like how to draw people and do animation and make the pictures move on the paper 
and in the graduate it's more like oh you're already kind of big just do your stuff and we will kind of help you so um that was kind of like I will have to try the the tip with the uh, with the soap. Okay. <sighs> But I'm actually, um, I would like to use synthetic brushes only because I, I like the idea of, of the brush being like synthetic so it doesn't require any animals to make the thing you're using as your tool. So um, I'm really um, for up for synthetic brushes. That's why I'm kind of happy I found the, the Raphael Soft Aqua thing that is okay. Do you recommend any art supplies shops in Kobe? I'm near there and I've only been to Tokyo hands. Um, from what I can remember in, in, in Kobe, there was a, there was a store uh, in the past, in the main like a shopping street that's in, in Kobe, there was like a bookstore uh, combined with uh, art supplies and office supplies kind of store which was okay and there was also Yuzawaya which was also okay but it's nothing compared to Tokyo actually which is kind of sad because um, uh, I, I really like art supplies and I was surprised how much stuff is in Tokyo that we didn't have in, in Kobe actually And in Kobe, when I was in Kobe, I was still doing a lot of stuff digitally, so uh, I did not buy so much art supplies, but... I mean, you can also go probably to Osaka and, and then look there for a, a Sekaido store, maybe they have Sekaido in, in Osaka. Or in Kyoto, in Kyoto they almost certainly have... Do you have tips for shopping art supplies in Tokyo? Yes, go to Shinjuku. And there are two shops there, not so far away from each other. One is the Sekaido store, which is the biggest one you'll get. And there's also the second one, which is called Tools. Like tools in English. And um, it has a lot of stuff also. And it's good because it has a lot of uh, the Copic stuff that the Sekaido does not have because the, I don't know why the Sekaido is kind of uh, it does not have any Copic uh, brand stuff so um, that's a shame actually if it had like Copic stuff it would be perfect but it does not have Copic stuff so if you are into Copic markers uh, you have to go uh, to the tools store also and there's also one in Ginza, uh, which is called K Itoya, uh, and it has a lot of like those kind of more high-priced like watercolors and a little bit more like exclusive brands, which is also nice. Okay, I will do the the, the bridge part more darker. I will use. Uh, neutral tint here, a little bit paints gray probably. I don't use black usually, but I want to do this part more darker. So let's you let's do it. Yes, thank you for the soap tip. I I will try it because this is this was a really nice brush actually from the Raphael, and I would really really like to use it again. Uh, I still use it sometimes. Okay. Okay. 
Ok. And now this part here, which is also like dark. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. And I will make this part darker here also. Like this, yes. And this pipe here is also darker. Darker part here, and there's like this kind of mesh of 3D kind of pipes and stuff here. So I'll just make it like there, so it's there. Any tips to learn how to draw perspective? Um, keep it really simple. Uh, what what I mean by uh, keep it simple? I mean most of the things that you see and you draw and you paint can be simplified into really simple boxes. And uh, if you learn how to do nice perspective boxes, you can do anything because uh, almost anything can be simplified to like uh, boxes. So it doesn't matter if it's a human or it's a building or it's a car or it's a ball. Ball can be also, a ball can be also simplified into a box. So um, if you learn how to do boxes and then how to kind of extrapolate those boxes into more complicated shapes, then you're done with perspective drawing. and. If you are really struggling with this, you can also use some help in in, in form of like three um, D software and 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 some uh, just put some boxes in the three D software and try to draw it and then run render it and draw it in in different perspective and different like um, from different camera angles and and see how the perspective works from from different places. And if you feel comfortable with the boxes, you can like um, then go to just drawing uh, stuff into the boxes. Like, so if you want a building, you just put the building like into a box, and then you make smaller boxes in this box. Uh, and this kind of process is kind of painful at first, but uh, if you um, go for it a lot of times you will actually notice that um, you will actually notice that your battery on your camera is kind of dying uh, I'll be right back I have a new battery I'm changing the battery in the camera, don't panic. It's only a small technical failure. Okay, and on. And we are back, probably. Okay. Okay, we are back. That's nice. Ah, <laughs> 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 
やったあいいオッケー I'm sorry for this quick interlude、uh, So as I was saying、um, If you do the boxes a lot like simple shapes You will notice at some point that You don't have to do it anymore Because you more or less know how, to, how the things will behave So it's always about practice Okay, so I have this part here. The problem with synthetic brushes is they kind of don't suck the、uh, paint in so uniformly and so well like the、uh, natural hair brushes. And. Oh. So,、um, this is a nice thing about natural hair brushes that they are kind of. Uh, more uniform how they release the paint and how they、uh, suck the paint up from,、uh, from the painting when you are painting. So,、um, I really was looking for a brush that would kind of have these characteristics. And、um, I found re recently the,、uh, the Raphael brush. That I'm using right now, which is kind of okay. On my right side, I have my small、uh, dishes. These are like ceramic dishes with paints mixed. I'm using them instead of a palette. I have a lot of them, like 10 of them, so I can just dump the ones that I don't need and, and take a new one if I, if I need one fast. So it's kind of useful. Okay. Okay, what's next? Let's do, the, like, let's do the darker parts. Do you see it? Kana just went to see the moon because、um, it's kind of cloudy here. So, I, we don't know if we will be able to see the moon. Okay, and I will use like a darker paint here. But, it's not a good thing. Okay, so I'll do the darker parts and the, the frame of the door. And I'm using the burnt amber for this and some nat natural, neutral tint, which is 782 in the Schminke world. And let's, let's see. Hello, Kana. Hello, Kana. Hi. Okay, looks, this looks okay. I'll add a little bit of water on the brush and I'll just smooth this part here up a little bit. Okay, like this. So these are like wo wooden doors with glass inside, and the bottom part is like、uh, not transparent, probably plastic paint or something like glass painted, opaque white.、Uh, Okay. I'm really rough with this, but this, this building has so much details that I'm kind of.
here also. Because this part here is wooden, I will just add a little bit of wooden texture like, like this. Just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. And also on this side, but on this side I will use a little bit more mm, like brownish color. Because probably here the light doesn't struck it so much struck reach it so much so it kind of is more col colorful here here do you mean do you like things like ecoline uh, i have not used so much of of this um kana has a set of like um inks liquid inks and i'm still to try them uh I'm always saying like, ah, I have to try them, but uh, I did not try them yet. So I, I want to try some. Yes. Czy jesteś czasem niezadowolony ze swoich prac? Uh, are you sometimes not satisfied from your work? Yes. I'm not satisfied for like 90% of what I do, probably. Not perfectly satisfied anyway. Like, um,. There are some shops in the storyfront series that I'm like, oh, this is good. But for most, it's like, mm, that was the best I could do. I don't know what I would have to do to make it better. That's why I'm kind of satisfied. But um, I always think that I can do, there is something I can do more. Which is a good thing, probably. Because it keeps you like pushing to, to 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 do stuff more, better, faster, and stronger. Uh, if you are kind of feeling un uncomfortable with your work or with the tools and or with the with the me medium or with the theme that you are doing a little bit out of depth, it's probably okay because this is where uh, interesting things happen because you don't know uh, things and because you don't know things you don't know that things are impossible or done in different way so you just try and to do them and you sometimes su succeed <laughs> Uh, so, for example, when I was doing the animation in the um, in the university, I, I set myself a goal to do an animation that is kind of like uh, cinematic quality and like Makoto Shinkai work and it's like five minutes and it has a lot of interesting backgrounds and I have only like six months to do this and I'm doing it alone. So I, I did not um, appreciate the amount of work and toil that will go into this but uh, because i didn't know it that i i was able to do it kana hato hi uh, kurduar again asks which anime that you worked on was the best and gave you the most pleasure oh uh, this is uh, this is really hard Mm, the last part of your name was nice because uh, when I was doing like the last like 10 backgrounds or something I was already kind of used to it and I know what I'm doing kind of feeling so I was like oh, okay I, I'm I, I, I have this but the first part was really hard I did not know what to do and I had to match my style with all the other background artists so it was really hard um, I did I did a lot of backgrounds for the I don't know if you know this animation but Hana and Alice weird case of Hana and Alice I think um, and it was the, this kind of weird animation with um, 3d characters uh, but the backgrounds were like photos made into like looking like watercolors so we were doing a lot of like um, how do you call it? Matte painting, which was also something different. 
than usual, which was nice. I did the, the Space Dandy uh, ani uh, television animation, which was awesome to do because we had like the most simple things to do uh, in the whole series, probably because we had like a we had like a whole planet with um, rubbish. So just like random junk. And it's the most simple thing to, to paint just junk and, and random things. Especially like mechanical like junk and, and, and old like rockets and stuff. So that was fun. Okay. I'll put a little bit of a shadow here from the curtain curtain thing. And a little bit more darker here. <sighs> Valentin asks, do you feel about, how do you feel about mistakes? Do you get mad sometimes? Did you ever give, gave up on a, on a drawing or a painting because of a mistake? Um, I don't think I ever gave up on a painting because of a mistake. With watercolors, you can you do mistakes all the time, uh, better or, or, or worse mistakes. Sometimes it's really hard. So you have to like take mistakes well, but. I, yeah, I get mad because of, of mistakes. I get mad because I'm kind of frustra frustrated with myself because I cannot do stuff that, uh, that um, is kind of like the image I have of a good painting and sometimes it's, it's really hard to achieve this level and you kind of get depressed. But there's also always this, the, the next thing that you want to do and I I get over mistakes really fast. I don't know why. It's probably kind of my nature. I get really depressed sometimes. I get like, oh, this is the end of the world and my work does not make anything. It's not good. Not, nothing I make is, makes any kind of difference and does not make any sense. And it's like completely in pieces for like an hour or two or, 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 or like five hours or something like that and next thing you, you know I'm already at my desk doing something different so <laughs> it's kind of kind of always says that I, I really am fast to, to change the like the way I look at stuff one hour I'm, I'm uh, really into animation and I want to like do the best animation and I want to be the second Miyazaki and in the next hour I'm like oh the animation is a complete disaster and I don't want to do it I don't want to look at it and so it kind of fluctuates a lot actually But most of the times I, I try to use any like free moment I have to just get better at the stuff I, I do, I guess, which kind of helps. Kana is really cute. I know. Hey. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I really like her drawings and I think uh, and her comics and stuff and I really think that's kind of important because we work like next to each other all the, almost all the time right now so uh, and we help each other sometimes with with work 
she helps me with characters I was actually doing the the, the um, storyboard for the animation so she was helping me with the with the storyboard a little bit for the characters and and like expressions stuff like like that because she's just better at it so yeah uh, do you re reproduce some of your old art pieces to, to to see how much you improved no i would like to do it this is another thing that i say i would like to do but probably i'll never do but um I'm this kind of, of person that is like, oh, new thing, shiny, let's try this. And I don't uh, go back to things I did already kind of tried. So I, I'm, I'm not really a, a good person for this kind of exercise probably, but I would like to try it. I, I, I saw people doing it on Instagram and I'm like, oh, I, I would like to... I would like to redo some of my old work, uh, but probably for me it's like new thing. Okay, this looks okay. This this is starting to look okay. Um, with backgrounds and painting scenes like this, n until you go to like ninety percent of done, most of the things look really bad. <laughs> Like, whoa, what's this? I don't know. Uh, I'm doing something. And there's like, oh, this looks okay. So it's important. So it's important not to get bored. And so it's important to finish. It's really important. And only when you finish something, you learn, actually, I think. Oh, and thank you all for your comments on Kana's videos because you uh, gave her a lot of nice comments after my last. Uh... Mm. Thank you very much. No, no, uh, and uh, so I'm. I, we are happy that you like her videos and works. She is actually working on a children's book right now, so she's kind of busy. But she wants to do more like videos and, and YouTube stuff too. I, I how do I manage to do this painting for two hours straight? This is nothing. I can do I can go for like hours and hours. Which is probably bad for my health and, and, and stuff, but um Usually when I when I do streaming I go like this, but usually I have my watch on my hand like this cheap kind of watch and I have set it for 30 minutes uh, timer like recursive timer so it goes again and again So uh, every 30 minutes I go up and go uh, around the house I, I, I do some cleaning or I, I drink some water or go around and just like play some ukulele or something and then I go back straight to, to, to work after like 10 minutes and it helps a little bit uh, to be to, to stay productive. Okay. <sighs> okay, so only the logo here, and 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 we are kind of done with the with the watercolors. I think I don't I don't think I, I just do like the background really quick. Okay, so I will use the indigo color, which is really intensive and deep blue, and I especially like the Schminke version of it because it's it's so intensive. Uh, and this sign is kind of intensive blue so uh, let's do it and uh, of course there's the, the letters here so I have to leave the letters out of this I'll zoom a little bit on this probably would be a bit more visible oh, yes okay. 
Okay, so I'm leaving the whites here. So there's the dye uh, letter. Ah. I will go. I will do this on my camera. Here. Okay. Okay. So like this. The indigo, here we go. There's a there's a song. And there is a another kanji here. I cannot read it, but it looks more or less like this. It looks like a car crash. Do you like pan watercolors or tubes? Uh, I actually use both. Uh, I use most of the times I use pan watercolors just because it's easier to swap them and I swap a lot uh, my colors in, in the palette. But sometimes I just squeeze tube watercolors to a pan and let it dry. So I, I don't actually for, for modern watercolors I don't think there's so much difference and if you read the the Schminke catalog they actually say that it's the same formula for for both of these paints so um, I have been actually buying the colors that I use the most like um, Potter's pink right now in pa uh, tubes and squeezing it to the pan a little bit of a ta uh, at a time uh, and letting it sit there and dry. Uh, and then add a little bit more and then again uh, let it sit for a while and uh, when I'm finished at, uh, with this process it actually looks just like the one that you can buy from uh, from the shop. Okay. Schminke catalog is the Schminke brand uh, kind of pamphlet thing that you can get in a store, like an art store. And they have all the colors of the Schminke brand there that you can just browse, like a print, like a leaflet. And there's a text, some text there. And if you read the text, it says that the pans and the tubes are actually the same. Um, holy, how do you call it? The same thing inside. Okay. Let's do the background really quick. And some blue here. And some blue here. Okay, and some darker color here. And actually, there's the, like the orangish thing here. Mm. Like the belt of safety. Okay. And ah, yeah, the letters. <coughs> <clears throat> I'll try to make this part a little bit darker. I would like to have it a little bit darker, but I don't know if this paper will actually... 
Allow me to do it. Let's see. Maybe it will. Dark. <clears throat> I'm planning to do more streaming, especially now that I finally managed to <clears throat> connect my uh, camera to my uh, computer so I can use my uh, Panasonic Lumix to do streaming, which gives me a lot better quality than just using. Um, a USB like live camera thing uh, the minus side is that uh, I have to change the batteries for uh, each hour or something but um, I will probably buy like the thing that allows you to connect the camera to a uh, like a power out outlet just use it without the batteries <clears throat> Okay, uh, I will just do the sign on the shop because it has like letters here and then we, we will be going <clears throat> to the pen department, yes. So I'll just use some neutral tint here. Thank you, I, I, I appreciate that you like my stuff, which keeps me going doing more stuff. <laughs> okay, so there are three kanji here that I cannot read so I just do them like this and there's the soba uh, sign which says soba in a fancy lettering so I'm just try to do it kind of similar so like this kind of uh. One more time. Okay, and okay. Okay, so like this, and I try to be kind of similar with the style of the letters, like the thing that is really there. And there are like three small letters here, like one, two, three. Good, okay. And I will just dry it a little bit. Sorry, sorry for the sound. Okay. And I will use the Sakura uh, stuff. The Sakura Micron. Uh, where, I, where I have my 0.4 ones? Okay, here. No, this is a brush one. Okay, I have it. Okay, so I'm using the Sakura Pigma Micron, all kinds of um, thicknesses. Probably we'll start with the 0.4 and let's see how it goes. Um, so, I just want to use it to kind of highlight the building so it kind of stands out from the background a little bit and i want to highlight the 3d aspect of the doors so all the places on the doors when when the 
the thing is kind of 3D, I will fix with the with the lines and then also add some textures here and there to make it a little bit more interesting. And th these kind of pens are good for to be used on <clears throat> watercolors when it's when it's kind of dry. Uh, the the problem with uh, like f fountain pens and and stuff like isographs is that they kind of bleed the ink to death when they are used on watercolors. So. That's not really nice. Okay. So I'm kind of highlighting the the edge of things that is facing us that we can see. Uh, so this way it gives a little bit more of a thickness feeling that it really has thickness. The problem with, with a lot of drawings is that um, when you forget that things have thickness, is uh, things become flat and kind of unnatural, even though they are like painted with perspective and they're nice and, and, and in the place that they should be. If you forget the thickness, uh, it's kind of sometimes weird. And usually I would do it with, with just watercolors like spend some time to uh, with a small brush to to do like for example these bars here I would like do it with watercolors but I want to do it a like, kind of faster so and I also want to try this paper and see how it handles stuff for now it's kind of okayish Okay, so there is like this air conditioning unit here. So I'm also adding like this kind of three dimensional effect to it while I'm adding the lines. And like this part here. And this is like a cable, so I make it, so I'll make it black. Okay. And this part, I will like add some texture like this to make it more visible what direction it is. And this part also like. Some steel kind of effects, and there's like also like a thing here, and there's like a pipe, and this pipe is holed up with this kind of clip here, and another one here, and also for this pipe, and this part is kind of darker. And there's like this kind of weird texture here because probably people were standing there a lot or something. So it's kind of darker near the doors.
Okay. It's key. Now, live. So, so to the yoga. Okay, so this is kind of slowly getting kind of finished. I will use a white pen, like the Unibal Sino, and add some, like, probably it's like chewing gum texture, like old stuff here. It looks kind of nice, so I'll add it here and a little bit here. So it looks like this car pine for part is kind of reflective a little bit, which is nice. Uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, the Sakura Micron Pigma 0.4. Yeah, I will make more uh, of the uh, watercolor tutorials when I just find a little bit of time. But now I, I just probably will be able to do it soon. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with enjoying others' art. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but there's also nothing wrong, wrong with uh, with giving critique and and saying things that you think if it's in polite manner that then it's really okay and okay learning is really important I still learn I still do a lot of st stuff to to learn. Each time I do a new painting, I, I think I'm learning some new things, so... Okay. Uh, I think that's that, probably. Uh, this is watercolor. This is watercolor, like... This watercolor here. It's just a regular, little bit better artist quality watercolor. Nothing, nothing more. And a little bit of pen. Okay. Uh, this is probably it. I will just add a little bit of. Texture here. By the way, I'm I'm now using the 0.3 because the four was a little bit too thick for for a texture like this. Do you find the transition to digital work challenging? Um, Yes, actually, because in, in digital work you can do all kinds of stuff <clears throat> and you can go crazy with the colors and you can just go crazy with the layers. So it's kind of difficult sometimes to kind of focus on, on what do you want to do b before you start doing stuff. So um, it's kind of difficult, but the other way around is sometimes difficult too, because watercolor is kind of not forgiving and you have to do <clears throat> stuff in the right order and if you are really used to digital and then it becomes kind of hard to get back to um, watercolors and acrylics actually acrylics is more close to digital because you can fix some stuff that you messed up uh, pretty well uh, okay Kanna. this part is too light I will just add some dark here. 
The good thing about the Sakura markers is that they are waterproof, so I can do stuff uh, to them later after they kind of dried a little bit. Yeah, this looks better, probably, a little bit. Okay, I will leave this at, at that. I will zoom out a little bit so you can see it better. Okay. I don't know what the chat is really hot about, but I, I love all you guys, so just stay who you are and, and, and write whatever you think. <laughs> yes, uh, working on the uh, your name backgrounds was really challenging because there were so many details in the uh, in the paintings. Okay, so for the tools I used for this so here are my here are, are my small palettes that I use I have some paper that I use for testing colors here and I have my watercolor set which is like this colors and I have been using the Sakura Micron Unibar sorry the white one some brushes water and some pencils like the Mitsubishi pencils and like the Mitsubishi high uni pencil and a me mechanical pencil to sketch stuff which is most of the things <laughs> okay uh, that will be this for that will be this for this streaming it's kind of late so I'll just go see some super moon on or whatever the moon is right now and that's it for today's work I will scan this uh, ah, okay so why why did I choose the porcelain dishes uh, they are really easy to clean uh, in plastic or in metal painted white it's kind of uh, difficult to clean after some time it gets kind of blue like this kind of bluish and you cannot really clean it really well uh, but with ceramics it's really easy to clean and uh, actually I have a lot of those so when I use some of those and I don't need this color anymore I just put it away and take another one so it's nice Okay, thank you for, for being here. I will scan this and put this on my blog, uh, but also I will put a high resolution version of this uh, for the Patreon supporters. Uh, and that's uh, it for this live stream. Thank you uh, very much and see you in the next video. Bye.